Hey, so it's time to do a Millie Weaver update. Um, uh, I've been following this story and there's been a few developments that have come. Um, um, I'm going to look at this other article. Again, it was put on heavy.com. I'm going to read it for you. It's um, uh, breaking news. Uh, so Gavin Scott Wentz is a conservative filmmaker and InfoWars contributor. Um, Millie Weaver's significant other, and based on Weaver's Instagram account, the father of her two children. Um, these are some facts that you should know about him. Wentz and Weaver were both arrested on August 14th, just a few days ago, on Friday, um, and booked into the Portage County Jail. Heavy spoke with a jail official who confirmed they both faced charges of robbery, tampering with evidence, obstruction of justice, and domestic violence. They were expected to face a judge on Monday, August 17th. Heavy reached out to the county prosecutor about obtaining a copy of the criminal affidavit. We have not yet heard back. Uh, the jail official we spoke to referred to Wentz as Weaver's husband, as did InfoWars host Alex Jones. The Cleveland Plain Dealer described Wentz as Weaver's boyfriend. Uh, Heavy has not independently verified whether the couple is married. Um, the first fact that you should know about um, the two of them who arrested together is that Gavin Wentz and Millie Weaver have been together since at least 2012. And here's a picture of them together on Millie's uh, Twitter account. Wentz and Weaver likely met while they were both living in Southern California. Weaver was born in San Bernardino, according to her IMDB profile. Uh, she pursued modeling early in her adult life, Newsbacks reported in 2017. Weaver co-founded a group called the Hollywood Girls Club in 2011, according to a page that appears to be affiliated with her current website, uh, Millennial Millie. Um, the club was described as a professional networking group for women pursuing careers in the entertainment industry as models, actresses, producers, marketing executives, and publicists. There's another picture of Millie and um, Mr. Wentz on Millie's um, Twitter. Wentz is also living in the lot. Wentz was also living in the Los Angeles area in the early 2010s, according to his LinkedIn and Facebook profiles. Neither page um, appears to have been updated in several years. Wentz first appeared on Weaver's Instagram page in September 2012. The selfie appeared to have been snapped at a baseball game. The couple welcomed a son in April 2015 and a daughter in 20, February 2019. There's a 16-year age gap between them. Wentz was born in December 1974, according to the inmate records. Another picture of the two. Second thing you should know that's important is Wentz studies physics and launched a site called Exetics 101. Um, or Existics 101. Wentz studied philosophy as a college student. He earned a bachelor's degree from CDU Sacramento in 1999 and a master's degree from the University of uh, uh, Philosophical Research in 2002, according to his LinkedIn profile. But before he began college, Wentz had been interested in the laws of physics, and he continued that enterprise after earning his degrees. Wentz operates a website called Exetics 101, he describes ascetics as the study of the laws that govern existence. He further explained on the site, ascetics is neither a name of a book nor the name of any specific dogma, doctrine, or ontology. Ascetics is intended and designed to be an independent of bias or opinion, an open subject employed to change through the refinement of its terms. There's a wince. Um, Twitter page. Wentz added in the bio section that he had developed new mathematics for applications in physics and non-standard calculus. He added on his LinkedIn profile that he had developed a solution to Cantor's um, continuing hypothesis, um, developed new definitions for the limits, for the limit, the um, indeterminate forms, and redefined the uh, definite integral and derivation.
Wentz also launched a YouTube channel in 2006 that garnered more than 8.6 million views. The videos discussed multidimensional time as it relates to physics, black holes, and the mystery of existence. Wentz appears to have moved on to other ventures in more recent years. His last YouTube video was uploaded in 2015, and the Exetics website has not had a new post since 2014. Wentz is a skateboarder. The third thing you should know about him is he's a skateboarder, earned a pilot's license, and launched companies in California and Colorado. Here is a picture of him doing the skateboarding thing on his Twitter page. Wentz learned to fly a plane when he was about 20 years old. He attended the Embry-Riddle Aeronautic University in Prescott, Arizona in 1994, according to his LinkedIn profile. A search of Federal Aviation Administrative Records show Wentz was certified as a private pilot in August 1994. Wentz also enjoys skateboarding and used the um, used to participate in competitions. In July 2014, Wentz shared a photo of himself wearing a bronze medal he wore at he won at a contest in Colorado Springs. Weaver has shared a few photos to Instagram over the years of him skateboarding of her skate of weaver skateboarding in may 2016 she posted this video of wentz on a ramp and wrote uh, gavin doing doing what he loves she also posted a video of wentz teaching their young son how to skateboard in april 2018 weaver took his love of skateboarding and launched an entity called Worko skateboards in 1997 according to his linkedin profile it's unclear whether this was a company or a team. The name Worko Skateboards does not come up in a search of registered companies on the California Secretary of State website. Wentz noted on LinkedIn that as it evolved, we transformed ownership or we transferred ownership to the skateboard team. But another registered company associated with Wentz does not come up. Hard boiled snowboards. Wentz was listed as one of two directors of the company when it was registered with the state in January 1997, but the company was dissolved in December 1998. Here's a picture of the Articles of Incorporation for hard-boiled snowboards. That's actually a pretty catchy name. Wentz and Weaver appear to have been based out of Colorado in the mid 2010s, according to a search of online records. Wentz founded a company called Sacred Bee Photography in Colorado Springs in March 2016. State records show the company was listed as delinquent as of August 1, 2017. Here is the articles of organization for that company. Sac Sacred Bee Photography. He's quite the entrepreneur. Um, fourth thing that you should know about Wentz is Wentz bought the Portage um, County House he shares with Weaver in 2018, but his mother is listed as the co-owner. Oh, interesting. There is the listing there. Some redactions. Wentz and Weaver put down roots in northeastern Ohio in the late 2018. Wentz bought a house in Diamond, Ohio, which is an unincorporated community located in Palmyra, or Palm, Palmyra Township in Portage County. Uh, Diamond is considered part of the greater Akron metropolitan area. According to the Portage County Auditor website, which is publicly available online, Wentz purchased their home on Yale Road for uh, $255,000 in December 2018. His mother, Patricia Beal, is listed as the co-owner. According to Beal's Facebook page, she is a native of Portage County, which would explain how Wentz and Weaver ended up in northeastern Ohio. The house has three bedrooms, two bathrooms, and more than 2,000 square feet of living space. The home sits on about five acres of land. Weaver was arrested at the home on August 14th as she recorded part of the exchange with deputies on her phone. That video has been viewed more than one million times since it was shared to social media. Wentz is not seen is not seen in the clip, but is like, but it's likely he was arrested around the same time as Weaver. Inmate records on VineLink show he and Weaver were both booked into the Portage County Jail just after 1:50 a.m. Again, I think that's an inconsistency. 
because um, the video sh clearly shows that it's daytime when Millie Weaver is taken off in the police car. Um, her kids are up. You, the sun's clearly high in the sky. And um, so she was taken. And then let's say it was around 1 or 2 in the afternoon or 3 in the afternoon even or 4. Who knows? Um, and she literally was taken to a prison and she wasn't booked into the prison for like eight or nine hours that just doesn't add up to me at all so this is just weird this 150 a.m. really bothers me uh, the fifth thing you need to know is Wentz pleaded guilty to disorderly conduct in a 2017 case in Portage County Ohio uh, there's the record for that Wentz has been arrested once before in Portage County, Ohio, according to a search of county records. Wentz was arrested in August 2016 on a misdemeanor drug possession charge. According to the complaint, deputies said Wentz was found to be in possession of a pill bottle with a clear plastic bag containing marijuana. Medical marijuana was legalized in Ohio in 2016, but recreational cannabis remains illegal in the state to this day. Uh, I'm not sure bringing up petty drug stuff that's just uh, they anyway um, it's a fact so continuing Wentz initially entered a not guilty plea but in April 2017 he accepted a deal and agreed to plead guilty to a reduced charge of disorderly conduct records show Wentz ultimately paid $267 in fines the current case against Wentz and Weaver had not been had not yet been entered into the Portage County Clerk of Courts online system as of August 16th. The case will likely be entered after Wentz and Weaver appear before a judge on August 17th and are formally read the charges. Okay, um, you can see kind of the development here. You can see where the case is going. This is just important information to know about her boyfriend, her husband. Um, whatever he is to her the most obvious narrative on this case is she was arrested right before she was about to release an explosive documentary that is most likely i mean that is the reason why this is going viral um, and everybody is so interested in this um, she's about to release this explosive documentary and then she gets arrested um, i said in my last video um, that's pretty stupid of the police because if they wanted to stop her from releasing this documentary the worst thing they could do is arrest her on the day that she's trying to release it that would be marketing gold um, for her uh, but like I said in my last video I don't I wouldn't put it back I wouldn't put it past the police to be that stupid okay there's a counter narrative forming here where this may have been a domestic violence type incident I'm not saying it was but I'm saying that there is a counter narrative forming um, based on people that have commented. I haven't actually verified this anywhere. I haven't seen it anywhere based on the comments that I've been receiving and emails that I've been receiving. Um, um, basically it's a dispute over the house uh, between the boyfriend, his mother and Millie. And there was some sort of pictures on a cell phone that Millie didn't like or he didn't like and so they went to the mother's house um, they grabbed her cell phone where the pictures were on it they smashed the cell phone up um, and then they gave it back to her um, and then they left and she told them to leave repeatedly and they didn't leave so that's the burglary they entered a house without leaving um, while she was in it that's the kind of the definition of what the ingredients of burglary and uh, then they took something, smashed it up, destroyed it. So that's the meets all the definition of stealing. And then they returned the broken parts up to her. And then um, and then they left. And um, the mother, um, uh, um, Gavin's mother, uh, went to the police, re may, uh, reported it to the police, filed the report, and then um, um, wanted Gavin and Millie arrested for doing what they had just done but then she changed her mind and said nope I'm withdrawing the charges but the prosecutor decided um, well hold on a second I'm gonna go after them without 
without you being involved. And in order to do that, you have to go in front of a grand jury. Um, so that narrative has been forming in the background here. And I'm not sure how true it is, but that I just want to put it out there that that's a, a background narrative. And honestly, to me, that narrative has an air of truth to it. I'm not saying it is true, but it does have an air of truth to it. But again, the more obvious thing is that uh, it has something to do with this documentary. Say that what I just described is 100% the reason for it, that it involved the mother and the husband and the burglary and all that. Say that's 100% the reason for why she was arrested. Now, this doesn't mean that it necessarily doesn't tie into the documentary. I think that it does, because I think that... Um, Normally, when somebody withdraws criminal charges, like the mother did, uh, the police just uh, go about their business. They don't care. Like, why do we need to create more work for ourselves? In fact, that's <laughs> the all too familiar uh, reality when stuff like that happens. Police are government workers. Government people, for the most part, are pretty lazy. And so that doesn't ring true to me. It doesn't ring true to me at all that the police went out of their way form this special grand jury to make sure that they got Millie Weaver and her husband and uh, arrested them. That doesn't, that doesn't ring true to me. What does ring true to me is that what I just described probably happened or something similar. Like I said, I don't know all the details, but something similar. There was something domestic that happened. I'm not sure those are the details, but, and that the police then saw what Millie was doing, doing with this documentary and they decided to go after her when normally they would never decide to go after somebody under these circumstances. But because it's Millie Weaver, because she's making this documentary and because this documentary is so explosive it names both Republicans, Democrats, Independents, uh, President Trump, President Obama, everybody, everybody gets named. Um, they're all involved. Um, because of that, Maybe there was pressure put on the prosecutor to form this grand jury, go after Millie, get her arrested, get her out in retaliation for what they knew was inevitably going to come out. Um, in my head, that's pretty stupid of them because if they wanted this documentary to go viral and have millions and millions of people watch it, that's exactly what they would do. But like I said, I wouldn't put it past the police to be this stupid. That's my theory. Let me know what your thoughts are. Please comment on this video. Um, hit the like button on this video. I need like, lots of likes. That helps it spread around YouTube or dislikes. I don't think it matters, likes or dislikes. Um, and um, also subscribe to my channel. Please subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to build the channel. Um, thanks for watching. Leave a comment. Thanks.